First thing, of course, we'll do is take roll call to make sure we have, in fact, a quorum. Um, and uh, let's see, look at Jim Bell, Bill Walbert, Amy Murphy Carroll, Betty Rashid, uh, Paul Foley's on there. Are there any other uh, noted committee members that are calling in? That's enough, though, right? Thank you. Um, I haven't heard back from um, Tolly uh, or Morrow or Chen, so we'll hear. Uh, we'll see if they. But they usually, they usually will call, uh, let me know if they're not going to be on. So uh, I have the planning on being on. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and as far as non uh, um, voting members, we have Stuart. Thank you, Joe Cohen. Thank you. off vacation, Joe. Thank you so much, sir. Tom Turrentine. Thank you. Uh, anyone else out there calling in? Were there any? Anybody else on the? I'll show you who's there. Yeah, can you keep that up so we can see? All right. Thank you. All right. Perfect. This one here. Thank you. You can see it over hey. there. Hey, Kevin. Good morning. They, but they won't be able to see you. But oh, okay. Well, I can. You can stick it over there. Yeah. Thank you. Go, buddy. Uh, any public comments? Joe, you didn't get anything, did you? No public comments. Okay, perfect. Uh, minutes. Everyone get a copy of the minutes? Yep. And thank you for writing them up, as always. Any improvements, corrections, Penny? No, they looked wonderful. Perfect. Thank you. Approved. Thank you. All in favor, Second. aye. Aye. And, uh, all right, update on design development budget. This matters. Yeah, uh, Joe, you want me to go? Or you want to go? Yeah. Nope, go right ahead. Okay, so we um, spent the last couple of weeks um, working with Ty's uh, pre construction team on the budget reconciliation. So, slammed in an independent budget, um, turned in their budget. Um, and the um, you know the initial result was about a two point eight million dollars spread, which was good. You know, so we were um, I would say a little pot higher than we should have been. But the whole part of the reconciliation is to sit down and, and review the numbers, review the scope, review some of the assumptions. We brought Brian in on that conversation to help clarify some items. Right now, we're down to about a um, half a million dollar spread, which is within the two percent mm -hmm. margin of error, and that's the, Close as you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. um, so um, what we did for the sake of the budget that Joe and I worked on is we're um, so the budget right now is between 19.5 and 20.3 million dollars. So it's a, a little bit higher than the than the um, I guess the initial target. But I, I, what I want to be clear is that some of the stuff that was put into the budget. Um, was allocated into soft costs. And one of the big things was the, the security and, um, and access control systems. Mm -hmm. So once we move that money up into the construction costs, we're, we're floating right around where we should be mm -hmm. um, as far as the margin of error goes. So there's any double counting right now? That's it's double counting, but, but it's just that the construction budget included stuff that was not included in the construction budget. Like I said, there was uh, almost $2 million in um, technology. Um, uh, that was moved into the construction. Like right. That was the story of buying care instead of having uh, so, the, club, the owner buy that. Mm -hmm. So, what would be our total project? Uh, what would yeah. be the total project? So, the total project, project cost right now is it's hovering around the still at 28 million or 29 million. Okay, so we only approved 27 in terms of. Um, uh, what we move forward in terms of bonding resolution, just that way. I saw it. Oh. So we had um, 1.5 from last year, that's included. Okay. And uh, so plus the 27.5, so we have all in 29. Yeah, but, but I think I think people's understanding was that the all in is gonna be 27 and a half, honestly. I'm not sure about that. Well. I'm not sure who understood that too. No, I'm, I'm not saying anything you said it. But, but it's a worthy goal, yes. Yeah, yeah. well yes. we should. You know, maybe once we have the full cost, we'll have to an update. Yes. So we clarify yeah. exactly where we are. And actually, I think that it's it's there could be an update either at the next board connect meeting or June, whatever one is the clearer view. Mm -hmm. that, that was the yeah. Is that what the new location was? 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do they have to all have to be capitalized? Oh, they can, can, can some of those costs be borne by the police budget next year? So that, why, why are they capitalized? Right, they're, they're, they're kept very hot. Some of it's not capitalized for sure. Well, yeah, so I'm going to tell you up to the Board of Finance and the CFO, really, you know, where they want to mm -hmm. put some of this. They have to rent the building. Right, that's in there. I mean, yeah, yeah. See, that's yeah. Like yeah. Our project includes a lot of things that we really have no control yeah. over. Sure. But it, right. it does become a cost of a project. Well, yeah, yeah. yes. So, borrowing money to pay Yeah, I mean, yes. I mean, there's the number that the people should understand is the all in cost of their new police station, which includes moving yeah. in, moving out, and all that kind of stuff. And then there's the cost that the town. Uh, and how we allocate it, how we bond it, and things like that. And for the purposes of a building committee, how we uh, really, you know, make sure we're talking to apples to apples with, uh, you know, soft costs versus construction costs and everything else. You're absolutely right. Right now, um, your point is that the people understand 27. I think, I think, you, yeah. you know, yeah. You, yeah. our reality is we have 29, according to Joe, Sort of. Because Joe, we are, we've already allocated with the the one and a half. We already kind of sent over one and a half million. But I think that's no, that's no. correct. I I can easily back out the one point five. I was just working in. I I try to always work in the total cost of the project, but I can back out the one point five because it's pre-construction yeah. services. That's largely soft cost for the twenty nine. It doesn't matter, but a soft cost is still part of the project. Okay, right? well, I mean it just is. So uh, if in okay. terms of the overall. Cost like when we did SACS, we had the preliminary money, and that was considered part of the whole project. Right, but I would say in terms of appropriations, we'll just have to clarify with the Board of Finance. They've mm -hmm. always been sequential, and the subsequent appropriations have never included previous appropriations. So my understanding from this would have been the twenty point five, and then an additional well, twenty seven million. Well, I, I just think maybe we need to it's like fair. We don't. We just need to. Articulate yeah. it and yeah. to give a, and to show exactly what we are doing, where we are. And clearly, the 27 five should cover what needs to be bonded. Truly, that should be easily covered. Truly, but I think in terms of we should keep our eye on this to see absolutely. if we can absolutely. bring this down. Absolutely. Okay, because yes. that in it, it's not okay. Look, okay. So we, we just can't say, oh, we already did a million and a half soft costs. Okay, we don't even think just, that is part of the project. It is part of the project. So, so the million and a half was done and then you appropriated a budget to another 27 fire in reality. Right. So we, absolutely. that's where we stand right now. We do, but I think there's a... That's the first half thing. We did a half million before the million and a half. But that was soft cost. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, I, I think what we're going to try to do, Joe and I are going to work on reconciling our soft cost, mm -hmm. and we'll be able to display all the line items for that soft cost and have some dialogue about whether it should be in or should be out, um, just so we can come to an agreement on, on what really the town is going to be spending as part of the committee's bucket of money. Thanks, Perry. You know, right. With one, yes. Yeah. And so that, that, that's something we'll have, but I think Joe, by the next committee meeting in a couple of weeks. So um, this is just yeah. getting out right now. But as far as construction costs, you're basically saying that there were some soft costs, or there were, there were some soft costs that we had, you know, that we are now going into construction costs because it's just easier for it. Easier. To, to take wow. care of it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. And that so far, as you guys put the stuff that you know, sharpen your pencils, we're pretty much in a happy place as far as these things could go, especially right. in the last two years. And there's still we have we have um a five percent design contingency built into that number that we were that we're reporting. Um so that's really to to kind of manage the gap between this estimate and the final set of drawings. Yeah. And that should be a million bucks, right? But exactly. And so that's a lot of money. What we're trying to do is, is uh, Joe and I already talked about this, is really kind of manage that. We don't want that to be this, oh, we have a million dollars. No, we really don't. Right. right. Yeah. So a couple of things I want to say. My job is so much easier when Amy's right here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. As long as he's not in front of my Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are two things that I want to uh, just to let you guys know that there are, there are two things that are not in this budget and we have purposely taking them out for the discussions. One is the re-roof of the fire uh, or the, the police department. Um, it's a 20 to 15 year roof. It was put in there. It was never really part of the project. It was put I'm in sorry, you have all the 2013, Joe? Yes, right around there. 2013, the roof was put 13. in. 13. So, 
Yeah. So it was 10 years. Um, so it was put in 10 years ago. And how? We make it 20 years out of it. Yeah. Well, so this is 25. It's not part of the project. Yeah, it's Oh, it's slightly yeah. 30, 35. What's the other one? Yeah, it's like the other one. Was Oh, wait, yeah. slate? Yeah. Not, not slate. Yeah. Slate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, shingles, but they want to show a slate okay. like product. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a it's slate look product. It's, I don't know what the composite material is, it's but it's plastic. Like, mostly plastic. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like the, the it's like the post office. Yeah. Like the, like it's a half a million dollars yeah. with the construction. It's expensive. Yeah. It's not going to be done when? When is it going to be done? We, we don't, we, we, we don't we're have to. We're debating whether this project, you know, should include a new roof. For the police station, right? It's a ten-year-old roof, a ten-year-old sh uh, shingle mm -hmm. roof, and the town, you know, the taxpayers paid for it, and the taxpayers could probably get another fifteen to twenty years out of this right. roof without blinking an eye. Or should we say, heck, we're doing everything else new. Let's put on a new roof. It's a four to five hundred thousand dollar expense, and so you know, the committee representing the taxpayers has to decide is this in or out. At some point, we don't have to decide it today. Um, but uh, we don't want to have to make sense. Let's leave it out for you. We can make it a yeah. bit alternate. You know, there's a lot of things we can do. We can alternate, just go back to a shingle product instead of something, you know, this higher end product. Or do nothing. Just, or do nothing. Yeah, exactly. Let's I guess we just want a recommendation from our architect and you guys on what the problems that we create if we love it. I mean, we have to develop roofs at different different ages. Is that going to be an issue? That, with that pitch on that roof, I mean, my first thing I, I said, you know, we would just, I would recommend just hiring a roofer to go up there, do an inspection, do it. Do, you know, we should probably be doing that anyway. We can really extend the life. But those life, those roofs should last 35 years. Yeah. And the most vulnerable part of the roof is trying to pay around the cool project, project, which we're yeah. going to be having to address anyway. Right. Yeah, good point. Okay. So again, it's something we we thirty-five for that discussion uh, down the road. We can put a bit alternate. We can look at different ways to manage that. Was there a second item? The second item is the shed. Um, the shed showed up as this little square box in the drawing, mm -hmm. um, and we had just we I think assumed you know we call the farm shed. <laughs> <You know? laughs> But I, I think that um, it has evolved into something much grander than that to the tune of uh, about $142,000 because it's a full building, which is a kind of building. Um, Do you mean need it? Well, I mean, we have yeah, a great big people in the building, okay? What storage is there above? You know, it's a large, it's the, the two bay spelling board has a large storage area above it, doesn't it? Uh, it's yeah. uh, there's a floor above it, and then there's just this, this the yeah. roof. Uh, Stuart, do you want to you want to chime in on the on the uh, on the shed and storage needs? Because I know last time we talked about it, between police, between uh, risk times, uh, between uh, you know some you know the discussion between the police and uh, and Tiger about who's going to keep stuff where. There was been a lot of discussion about how much this uh, quote unquote shed is needed. You want to throw some light on that? Well, yeah, uh, uh, it sounds rather ridiculous, but um, there are a number of agencies, uh, Russ Kimes and all the emergency operations materials, as well as, for that matter, CERT, um, and the police department all are seeking, uh, currently searching for additional storage, uh, dry uh, storage, it doesn't have to be heated, but dry storage in the town of Canaan, and it's, and it's scarce. Uh, um, we have not uh, successfully found any to speak of. And I know that within the highway, within the uh, police department, one of the areas that uh, they currently have an almost an entire bay full of is the, uh, what I would call the, the auxiliary uh, uh, materials for road signs, uh, uh, barricades, uh, electric signs, et cetera, et cetera, all these materials that that don't that shouldn't be left outside, but really wouldn't need to be in a heated building either, and that's what this this storage area was was all about. So, um, I don't how know. About, how about Irwin Barn? We have a great big barn there. We are redoing the roof. Sorry to use for storage. The garden yes. stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, the other thing, why not the transportation? Why not? The, you know, the we're looking at we're looking at areas, but you know that you have to also understand that that whole bay was used by Fred Tiani Jr., God rest his soul, you know, right. for police use as far as special events, other things that they had going on, you know, so, you know, and we already have 
two storage units from the police department at the highway department. We already have two. Yeah, we had three. We asked them to condense down to two. Now we have two. So we've got one outside our yard and one inside our yard. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's the logical place to have your storage. I mean, there's plenty of room there. So. Yeah, it's just that the, what complicates it. What I've heard, and I think this is where we need to really have some sort of debate about is, is you know, the way that the area is, you know, we're putting retaining walls around it. It's a full foundation. It's a full building. And um, the idea of storing, we heard of storing stuff in there that really can't be stored inside the building. Right. And the stuff that in an emergency, they're not going to go to the transfer station. They want it. Yeah. They want it at the police station. So, so I kind of impressed with here. But. Yeah. If they're storing hazardous material, but I, that could be a whole host of things, right? Um, it could be we heard we heard potentially storing ammunition in there. Uh, we've heard um, that um, it may or may not need to be climate control. I mean, if you're putting ammunition in there, you certainly do. Heat, no heat. So this thing becomes a small little. That, that should, this should be taken offline with the police. Yeah, it's yes. exactly. It's just. It, it, you know, we're basically bringing it up as a discussion point that the building yeah. committee will you know, be deciding yeah. with yeah. input from the police and Russ and. Uh, yeah. uh, more important. Yeah. Yeah. More yeah. So I get my question. These needs weren't discussed when we were having all the discussions with Brian and the amount for storage previously. They, they were discussing it. They put the building on in the plan, but it, we just never had this conference. So let's get this. Let's clarify that. Oh, okay. And, and, and let's, let's have people be think long and hard. I remember going through this building study forever ago, and Tiger made a great point. There's never a that with them. Okay, so you have to think. I mean, think about like think about the stuff they found in the sacks. I mean, Russ can say, "Oh, we had all this safety stuff from 40 years ago." So let's let's think long and hard. I would love a third day garage in my house. I deal with it. Yeah, yeah. And what the else? I'd like to know um, what the cost per square footage on this. I mean, um, we're having to have to do on the shed. Yeah, on the shed. Well, I don't. I, I don't want to throw that out there. Mainly because. No way again. Again, we can have a $5,000 shed or, or just keep it on the plan for DMD approval and then yeah, there's exactly. or someplace else. Yeah. There's a box showing on the drawing yeah. that has yeah. a certain square footage. That's a very good point. Yeah. 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 We don't want to change. Because if we go to PNZ without it, it'll be harder about it. I mean, if we could find a location, if we could find a location in town where we could build a similar structure, but for you know thirty percent less, I, I think that would be fabulous. Obviously, the, the, always the challenge is finding those locations, or 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 to Amy's point, trying to uh, uh, you know apply, uh, modify slightly a building uh, and be able to make you know better use of a building. I, for example, I, I believe the. Um, the new board of education cellar is pretty much a large empty space, but we don't have accessibility. I mean, if we could spend fifty thousand dollars and create accessibility to the cellar of that building, maybe that solves a whole bunch of problems. Um, we're saying nobody uh, can access. I can say the board is already looking at using trying to use that space. They, but, you they, know, we can. They we can <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Fundamentally, what is it being used for? If that's a it, big question. Yeah, yeah. It's a good spot to this. Yeah, we right. have a great big building. Yeah. And we're okay. So let people look long and hard. Take, Kevin's over. Take it offline. Yeah. Have it have it on for approval and then come back to the April 25th is the uh, planning zoning meeting. What's what we decided after that that we get past the planning zone. Do we have to show on uh, plan? It's, 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 yeah. it's on the plan, but we don't have to show whether or not there's air or, or stuff no. like that. Doing. Okay. No. Um, and so I, I, I would just. Wanna... I would just like to caution that I think that what they're going to show up planning and zoning is a is a full on like brick shed, which they might like. So if we're going to make it a clod or farm shed, we should make them a we should get approved whatever shed we're going to we're aiming for. So, so you're saying that they they're going to see something that's a prefab with a full out right now. It's a fully it's a full big building. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah, we've had shed like at the track and stuff. You know, they're on the they're on BNC approval. They're, they're not specified very clearly to what, what, what they are. So, yeah. yeah. How secure is it? I mean, okay, well, they, yeah. they, they have to. Yeah. We need this. Yeah, yeah. We'll take it offline. We need a very strict. 
mm. parameter mm. around what this building would be yeah. used for and what it wouldn't be used for. And why we need to consider how large our building is set up for other things. It's a huge logo building. I mean, it is right there. Sure you can look at both of that. I don't think you want to use it for hazardous materials right back. next to the daycare. <laughs> So the last thing we're going to do, again, we're, 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 what Joe and I talked about with Brian, is we want to manage the day results. And with, with Ty's help, we're going to come up with some alternates that either we're going to, we're going to pull aside um, and we're really going to start looking at um, some of the things that are going into the building just to make sure they're not a, a wish, but you know, a need first and maybe a want second. But um, well, a couple alternates that we can carve out that can go into the Baltimore bidders list um, that when we get the final numbers, we have some flexibility in saying, okay, let's carve this out, let's carve that out. Yeah. We already have that predetermined. Um, and then trying to manage that 5% contingency, I think, with, uh, with Turner's help on the um, uh, the next stage of uh, the evolution of the documents, we're really taking a close look at not purposely spending it because it's there. And, 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 but the structures in the state of flux right now, it's, it's, it's transitioning a little bit. So it's so yeah. different. That. Yeah. I, I think for the better, you know, we did, we did uh, re-engineer the uh, superstructure to a simpler form. We believe that should cost a little less money. And we have Was it the, uh, the food construction type that you were Yeah, the field. What were they calling it? Uh, the block and plan gallon. Yeah. yeah. So, which, where are we now? I, I heard the first level is going to be a uh, block and plank, and the second level is going to be steel. Like, we have not steel all the way. We haven't seen it on, on paper yet, but my analyst is saying it's transition more steel. Yeah, what we're, we're doing is we're, we're making so a steel structure, structure to yeah. plank, plank decks. Okay. With a plank deck, right? No, it's not a very good it's kind of topic solved. Uh, yeah. yeah, but uh, the whole point of that is, is sequencing is that you're not stopping and starting and stopping and starting. Um, so the steel goes up and then the planks can come in. Um, and, and so it doesn't have to have the, the, the um, block and plank go up and, and then the steel guy come in from the other Yeah, I agree. What's the longevity of the block and plank holes? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's so it's kind of equally as long as equally as long. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. What, what what are the planks made of? Concrete. Concrete. Well, if you think about a three four inch parking garage. Parking. Yeah. 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 It's just on the plank. Why do the three four slabs? Well, those fail all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, look at the environment that they're in. Okay. Uh, that's I have to see the salt and carbon is all powerful. I have two questions. One, did the public safety radio equipment permanently get relocated to the radio one thing? Not coming back to this to the attic? I don't know that answer. Yeah. Stuart, do you know that answer? I, 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 the, sorry, the, the acoustics were so bad I couldn't hear the question. Uh, is the radio equipment being permanently relocated to Waveney? That's uh, the yes, that's the current plan. And you you won't have antennas on the on the on the renovated building? No, 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 no. Wait, wait, let's let let me be more precise. The the uh, the equipment that we're talking about are the servers that it, it, think of it as a computer. They're the servers that drive the public safety radio system. The antennas themselves will remain on the building. It they are considered a a second a, a, a an integral part of the two way radio system. But the big equipment that's in right now functions as the main central is being moved over to Wavy. Correct. The, the brains of the uh, the brains of the system. Uh, it, uh, my understanding is the brains of the system will be moved to Waveney uh, and will be provided a generator as a, and will remain there forever, so to speak. Is that on the water? I'm sorry. Where at Waveney? Waveney Water Tank. We have a hole in that building that has all the carriers. The we have our own room. It'll be moved over there. But we also we have money for that in our radio public safety radio budget. Right. That is not. Yeah. <laughs> about like the water company letting us keep our equipment on there. Yeah, it's all that's all that's all okay. Right. And and the, the water tank has just been completely uh renovated so to speak repainted and all of our equipment on the top of the tank is new uh the cabling is new everything is state of the art as far as the water tank is concerned and so so we're simply moving the brains of the system from the police department over to Waveney. We, we needed to move it anyway during construction, 
uh, and it made sense to move it and leave it uh, and 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 um, permanently. So we will. And, there, and there's no issue, sure, with it being over there versus the police department. Doesn't it's designated? No. no. Okay. No, and and currently we use a backup generator that's uh, offered to us by Verizon, uh, but we are going to put our own generator over there. Uh, the Verizon electricians don't always understand that that we are dependent on their generator, and sometimes they disconnect it. Us, I should say, disconnect us from their generator. So we're we've decided that's a risk that's not worth having. So we will put our own generator over there. Kevin, where's the money for that, for that generator? I'm waiting for about $3 million for the upgrade of the whole system. Part of it. What, it was that? $100,000 or to, to move it over there? Joe? Yeah, it would be. So uh, we don't have the quote from the from the contractor yet, Norcom, but um, it most of the some of the money was included in our our budget at that point. It was to keep it live during construction in that room. So we have uh, like fifty thousand dollars we can transfer over to um, to that project. The, the additional costs that I foresee, and that is the is the air conditioning and the generator. So we'll probably have a couple hundred thousand dollars of cost to get that room ready for it. That's um, outside of this budget, as far as I understand. You're saying it's going to stay in the building while it's being renovated, operating. That was the that was the original that was the original intent. How about the separation of the ambulance building? Everything done to the ambulance building to make it totally separate by the time we start construction. Okay, I, I think there's no way to lines and stuff like that. That's right. I think it's just so, I, there's a couple of things that still haven't been decided. <laughs> and then finally, where did the emergency generator end up? Is it still in the that's out there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the site the site work plan does show the landscaping plan shows it where where you weren't uh, 100 percent happy with it, but they Brian challenged everyone else to look and, and see if there was a better location for it without losing more parking. Um, and I went through the exercise trying to move it around the site. And I could not find a better better section for it. If anyone does have a better area for it, besides besides the shed area, the shed area was something that that possibly would have, you know, if there's no shed, then then that area. But if anyone has a better idea, um, but it is screened well on the landscaping plan, so that's what's going forward to planning and zoning. Yeah, just run out of time. That's not the area now, so it's looking good now. <laughs> well, uh, that's all I have on the budget update and current progress. I think um, um, either here or on the council on the ship, how we move from the design plans for the pretty analog to the uh, action plan to the full A to see how we get from where we are now to having being ready for police occupancy. Yes, there's without design to be need to put somebody in charge of well, the that project. The appropriate is uh, engage the attorney to do it. I mean, material, but there's some straightforward way to get this done quickly because it's been we can't do we get a date for that. We can't go out to bid. We need a date for the completion of certain our locus uh, temporary facility. People, what's the budget for that? There is no budget right now. No, there is a budget. So we have we have a two million dollar budget to, for the police move in general. So within there is a there's a fit out cost for thirty nine locusts. And right now in the schedule we have August twenty fourth as the anticipated move date for the board of education. Those are the best facts that we have right now. Build plan and manage the management people improvements and getting it ready for police to move in. Don't we have to bid? Well, that's a question. Can we draft the question? Can we uh, do you have to bid or is it going to be uh, on to, uh, to the building department? I mean, to the public works. I'm sorry, you're you're breaking up there, so I can't hear. 
that well. Is. But um, but we we anticipate getting drawings from Brian in the next few weeks, and then we'll put the project out to bid. And you feel good about the, the timeline for, uh, as we know it right now, for uh, for the move and that it won't uh, put us behind the eight ball? Here's a question, Joe. Do you want to manage or do you, uh, or do, you do we engage Turner to manage that process to get it all the way through? Well, I think they, I think they would be at the table, um, but I, I don't think we need them to, to manage the, the process. We didn't hire them to manage the process. We could always add it if, if you'd like, but um, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll see how the, how it progresses. I would like to see somebody in charge of that there's some project. Well, I'm, I'm currently in charge of that project. Okay. It's a small project. Yeah. It, okay, it, good. Yeah, and we, we don't want to add levels to this temporary, no. and if it's 90%, you know, uh, well, it's I mean, temporary. Okay. Just the one thing we do want to do is we want to make sure, Joe, I just know how much you do. So we just yes. want to make sure it's resourced appropriately mm -hmm. so that it doesn't end up postponing mm -hmm. and adding costs mm -hmm. to our project because they're taking on yeah. longer that, yeah. that we're, yeah. that, that's the only, so it's not, I mean, I don't know what, maybe we need to have an off, maybe, I know that there are concerns about security with the move to moving the police into the board of ed, some of the changes that have to be done in the board of ed um, building, you know, deal with security that you do not want to discuss in a public session. So maybe at some point we need to have an executive session where we bring this group, because I don't, I mean, that's, this is one aspect of the project that I don't understand. I don't want to see it slow down the reconstruction, but when we need an executive session for next meeting for Brian to describe exactly what it's doing. So we have a better idea about what the issues are. So so when Brian will have the plans complete in about three three weeks from now, we'll we can schedule we could schedule to have that on the agenda. So not for our next meeting, but the following meeting that we could go through the scope. So that project has to be bid out and, and ready to go for, you know, August. Does that get bid out as one project or does that get bid out in separate packages the way we'll, we're going to bid out the police building? No, I think it, it doesn't it doesn't warrant that. I think let's do it as a GC, one, one contract. And Turner, I'm sure, and, 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 and I was going to talk to Turner offline, but Turner can also bid it. I mean, they'll, they would, they would, possibly bid it as a GC if they're interested. Yeah. Good, because in the end, it's our, it's our budget, but we're trying not to, uh, you know, get in the way of people doing the work. And, uh, but we obviously uh, care an awful lot about, you know, the completion well, dates. So we, path. we start yeah. our project yeah. that was finished. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Board of Ed feels pretty good about the what they're doing there. Uh, I know the plan for the Board of Ed now is that three separate functions going into that building. So they're building the two schools first, and then they're going to build the Board of Ed offices. Um, it's for, so but I think it's all progressed. I mean, mm -hmm. We're getting reports on it. Um, and I was over looking sort of through the windows because I was across the street and it looked like it was sort of a see through. So, I mean, they've done a lot of demolition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on the, uh, on the move? Todd, did you want to add, going back to uh, Gene's comments, did you, did you want to add anything on the, um, on the, on the cost reconciliation? Uh, no, I think. We covered that. I think one thing we did, we had our own little, uh, what we call OAC meeting earlier this week, which is owner architect contractor. And uh, Joe wasn't able to join us, but uh, he really turned around slam. Mm -hmm. um, just talking about uh, early procurement. Mm -hmm. So um, we we discussed that. I think the three components that I think are critical given the state of the, the market these days is the generator, the switch gear, and the uh, rooftop. Um, so uh, when we get the uh, updated drawings um, at the end of this month, uh, the idea would be to go out with uh, some packages getting competitive bids mm -hmm. through our uh, <laughs> 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 Yeah, I think that's 
So, Kevin, that was you know one of the things that you know offline we've been talking about just to make sure that uh, the, you know we I think we foreshadowed that with the town. I think the, you know all sophisticated people, the board of finance and such, that they understand this is a uh, reality, and we just want to make sure that there isn't going to be uh, uh, a, a problem or a delay in getting money to pre-order these things. What would be the time frame when we would want to go out to uh, that? As soon as we get these documents uh, for like May first ish. Um, we put those packages out where the engineers need to sort of finalize the specifications. Um, and, uh, you know, with generators, there are basically three groups Generac, Kohler, and, and uh, Kevin Miller. Uh, in fact, it's really the discussion we had Tuesday was to identify the items. Uh, Brian is working with his MVP engineers to wrap up those specifications and documents. Early so that so that we can go out on the street, direct the vendors, and with Turner Logistics, we can we can get free bids on the different products. Um, what we asked Turner to do was to come up with a cost that we'd have to commit prior to the establishment of the final budget. And these are costs maybe for um, hopefully just design, shop drawings, uh, maybe a deposit. So what does that number look like? Yeah. So it, it would be a, a fraction of the total cost, and maybe you know twenty percent, something like that, um, order of magnitude. So, right. but it, it, it saves you, you know months. Uh, can, can we get the authorization for the project is until the next fiscal year? Do we have? No, as soon as as soon as the town council votes next week, and then we will be on the eighth day beyond that, we have authorization for the project. Okay, even though the bond is living. Okay, just making sure. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's the next big step for us is, to, is really to handle all the items and get those in, in your hands so we can make sure the money secures so we can order the materials. Have them all, you know. There are several values at 50 to 65 weeks of time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that would be part of our update to the town box when we give them an update on the cost. We would tell them what we've already gone out to get on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, we want to do a, all the soft costs. That's to be hard about like the whole uh, right. uses, a whole uses, and the sources we obviously know from the right. So we would procure the, the material and then assign the installation to the, the contractors that we go out and bid. And will we, in some cases, get it for delivery and have to store something? No, no, it would, given the lead time, yeah, we by the time it shows up, we're that'd be nice, but right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know, I mean, it. We don't want to have to store stuff. Remember, we're having problems with right now. Is there a lay down plan for the, you know, the PG is going to want to know what the construction space is going to look like? In terms of yeah, we have a just a plan. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys want to go to uh, point five here, let's move on. Yes, we need a vote for any release, right? Okay. Uh, the um, commissioning services. We talked about this at the last meeting about. Uh, Basically, bringing in an engineering firm to commission our uh, uh, our uh, HVAC systems, um, yeah, uh, and uh, so that we don't get a uh, uh, he said he said kind of a situation. I think uh, conceptually we were all in favor, but uh, since it is technically uh, another uh, element of uh, design and, uh, and uh, cost, we thought the building committee should uh, be on record as voting to approve that. So, uh, do you want a, a quick rehash of uh, what we're talking about? Yes. The, the question is, uh, uh, there's an, a firm here who is uh, by that firm being So we we had recommended with, uh, I guess, consultation with both uh, Brian and and um, Ty here. Um, IES IES did that no tool. Mm -hmm. Um, we thought they did a good job. Um, at the thorough and Brian's used on another project. So they, they were, I guess, unanimous um, on the, the, their abilities and qualifications. So I reached out to them um, and to their quote, which we had received. Um, I negotiated some of that with them on their behalf. And basically, we're focusing on is the HVAC equipment. That's really the biggest, always the biggest complaint, the comfort complaint. Um, and because the, the way that the building is being constructed, there isn't a lot of, you know, once those ceilings are closed and they're hard, it's hard to go back in there. Um, so it's important that we have the commissioning um, in a way that um, as the progress of the project happens, that they're kind of approving it as an independent 
um, with, with Turner's um, uh, coordination um, as a project progress. And so it's it's a it's a great way to just have this thing on day one operate correctly. And what was the rough cost? Rough cost were um, we had uh, thirty something thirty. So the cost is 36500 right. And there was another and, and then there's 22750 as an option if we um, have them commission the electrical systems, which we don't necessarily know if we, we do or not, because we could have the um, the engineer of record do that. So uh, it would be 365 um, with an option for the 2750, which I don't think we'll take. And we had already always assumed we would bring a professional on board to do this in. So it's already part of the budget. We're just- It's part of the soft cost. We've, okay. we've, we've allocated funds for it. Yeah. Um, Not that I'm focusing on that. Yeah. Why would you? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think we actually have a little bit, we're a little heavier in, in the budgeting for that, but-, but so you're saying what, once this is in, everything's sealed up and you can't go and fix it. I, I mean, you know, I know when we do construction in our house, they put that in a stick stage, you have to kind of break open the walls to fix it. So we're in the same situation here. Once you, once you set it up. It's, it's harder. I mean, it's harder. the access panels for, for certain things, but, but yeah, yeah, it's very two different things. One is the distribution system. That's hard to deal with after you build it. The equipment is going to be serviced any time. Sure. And it was what the flow issue, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the control part of it. It's the, the um, making sure that, that the, the air flows are, are what were designed. Mm -hmm. um, so he he participates in the um, setting up of the specifications too. Mm -hmm. So he works with Brian to make sure that there are parameters and, and checkpoints along the design process that he has to validate. Mm -hmm. um, and then the final step is before it's uh, accepted, he goes in there and just checks pressures and checks airflow and checks um, um, the, the control systems and make it functioning correctly. So he basically does this kind of fine tuning with the mechanical contractor and Turner to say, okay, the system is doing what it's supposed to do. And we had some problems at Saks and with his help, he was able to flush out a lot of problems. Yeah, this is, this is incredibly valuable. This is, yeah, this is, this is yeah. cheap, cheap insurance. Yeah. It's $36,000. Yeah. And Saks has turned out well, Greg. And you do it before you, yeah, that's you do it before you close the ceiling? It's ongoing. It's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, when the doctor goes out, the pipes get as he goes and does this in building. All yeah, the, that's all they did. All the all them all. Yeah, that's really important. A lot of this is is um, piping. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's BRF system, which is variable frequency flow. So it's hot and cold water running together, and they mix into this into these um, boxes that we are extracting. The heating or the cooling based off of what the demand is. So it's not like there's a lot of air getting pushed in a lot of times. So it's a lot of it has to do with making sure that the that the, the piping is is secure. We've seen a lot of blowouts in piping that weren't welded correctly. Um, so you know, make sure the pressure test is done, make sure the water test is done, um, and making sure that the flow is correct, making sure that the, the, the controls are programmed correctly. It's very sophisticated. Yeah. So are we doing this building? So that you can have heat from some parts of it and air to other parts of it. Yes. Yeah, that yeah. that used to be called two pipes versus four pipes. Well, what they call now? Yeah, it's a. I believe, and I'm correct. It's a new system that constantly runs. Yeah. Yeah. It's a constant temperature. Um, the unit itself, just like your air conditioner. Um, when you turn your air conditioner on, it blows heat out the back, right? And cools the front. So this, that acts like an air conditioner. You can flip it around. And it would extract the cooling and blow heat inside. So the, the, the compressor inside is what determines whether it's a heating or cooling mode. The loop is a constant temperature, so it either extracts or, or uh, adds heat to that. From so the, the whole loop, loop is going to be heating or the whole loop is constant temperature. It's going to be give your both. Yeah. So it it, it circulates this, this refrigerant throughout the entire system. <laughs> yeah, I have a to as guess. Yeah, and then the, the the local control for that unit determines whether it's going to ask for heating or cooling. That's the beauty of it. So each room has had its own temperature control. Yeah. Um, so 
you have three pipes um, with this refrigerant base system that allows you to do heating or cooling. Um, if you want to do heating or cooling, then it's a two pipe system. But, so instead of, instead of, instead of yeah. now it's yeah. 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 right. 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 Oh, second, second. Uh, all those in favor, I uh, all right. vote yeah. yes. All vote with yes. Yes, that's a yes. Hey, Thank but you, hey, Jim, what's the recourse here if it doesn't work? You know, we get two months into the building and we're done and everybody's gone home and it doesn't work and things don't work. What, you know, who's responsible for fixing problems? And maybe you know we don't know the answer on that today, but so Paul, yeah, or Joe, yeah, Paul. I mean, it basically, Turner is responsible to deliver the whole project. This is just an added insurance to to make sure that everything is has been tested and works as it as it should. It doesn't okay. relieve the contractor of their responsibility to deliver a complete functioning project. Great, and thank Turner, you. Obviously, we'll push some of that down to the subcon subcontractors or most of it. So each, you know, someone's responsible contractually for every system. Uh, so thank you. More likely that it will work out properly. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. No, I agree, Jim, and I, that's why I voted yes. So I think it's a great idea. Yep. Yeah, there's, I think the, the complexity of the, of the operation is what we're trying to avoid having people come back in during you know, they're fully operational and you know, contractors come in and trying to troubleshoot the problem. So it doesn't prevent it, it just it just minimizes the risk of that happening. That's all. So it's a great degree, I think. Yeah, it does. A lot of checks and balances. One, one of the nice one of the nice things is that we also they are an agent just for the town. So they're what happens when there's problems with HVAC systems and electrical systems um, that are controlled by the control system um there's a lot of finger pointing so these people have the expertise in the in the physical equipment to go and measure things and say okay this isn't communicating correctly or this is a you know a, a bad point um or a bad relay or something like that so it gives us a much more deeper dive and they have a certain level of expertise yeah okay that. thanks that's good What's the total budget for HVAC? Yeah. There is that question. Are you seeing any public buildings being done with uh, geothermal? Yeah, just uh, yeah. I, I or private or private. Yeah, yeah. No, well, because private. because there's currently a program that's in effect for another two years where you get a thirty percent as a tax credit for municipality, but we've got no more. Give you the money back and the three million dollar price would be interesting off that. Uh HBAC was about two point three million. The cost on geothermal is is so much higher, and with these uh, variable yeah. flow systems, they're equally as energy efficient. Mm -hmm. So you're getting you, you don't have to worry about covering this additional cost. You're coming in with an equally efficient, lower cost system. So, and I say, I don't think you have real estate. Yeah. Well, that's but besides that, I agree. So, on the other hand, does any of this equipment qualify for energy efficiency? Oh, oh yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe eligible. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have to at least meet the yeah. code minimum, and then uh, then you can see that yeah. between the source and the investment tax credit, we do perhaps buy some money to get that. So, yeah. I'm not going right then. They did. I mean, we have a pretty robust energy program for China. The, the, the energy code is very strong. What about the solar? Because we're adding solar to the back of solar. Yeah, are we going to do that at the PPA? What are we, how are we going to do the solar? Not sure how you're, you're doing that. We've invested in it for our, our town buildings. Yeah. We have the schools have the PPA. buying it or we buy the equipment to buy it. Yeah, then you have to wear slice glass. The town does, but we're doing the PPA. We the schools do the PPA. Yeah. 
But I bet the solar ready up, right? No, not the solar ready. The solar panels on top of the car. Yeah. So the solar panels. On the court. In the budget that you just gave us, purchase the solar. It's not, a, it's not a big system. It's you know, maybe thirty thousand yeah. dollars. So that's not going to happen. Yeah, we'd yeah. sign it. Yeah, we're going to put solar panels on the roof. Yeah, there's no. It should be in the budget. Yeah. 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 There was no there was no solar panels in the budget. It was always roof roof ready. It would be a separate a separate line item. So just so I'm not the solar is only on. Which part is not on the addition, part, just on the part. part. Yes, that's not in the budget. That's not a, that's not a big system. Yeah. Well, we should put it in the budget because uh, we can tell people we're going to do. Yes. We, 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 we should ask. We're going to put solar panels on right. there. Because the there's no reason we, not to put it on. It's a small amount of money. There's no reason not to put it in the, yeah. in the budget. So uh, yeah. it's been a I, lesser magnitude of regret of people using this. And so I don't, I don't disagree with that. I would just say that in principle, if we add anything to the budget that wasn't included in the original budget, I want to show up below the line as an ad that the town can elect to do or not do just from a, a cost because it's classic scope creep, you know, like we have all of a sudden we have a roof for, you know, 400,000 and then we have an outbuilding for, for um, you know, 140,000 and then we have a, a, a move of uh, emergency equipment that's two hundred thousand dollars more. So those are the sort of things that we just need to well, go no, in I, fully open. We had always talked about solar on this, so why don't think this would be a scope creep unless you think it, unless you thought we were always talking about PPA, in which case there wouldn't be. Right. So it was it was solar ready in the in the budget. We have not included solar panels so far. So we could always we could always add it. But it wasn't in the budgets that were presented, the 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 estimates that were presented in the past. I guess that nuance was lost on me. Yeah, if, 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 if that little nuance was lost, if, if, we assumed that the panels were in the budget. When we did this billing, they were taken out when they got the engineer. So there's going to be some bad engineers along the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But solar panels on, a, on the top of a car port is uh, it seems like a no-brainer. You know, in the, in the so, grand scheme of okay, just on that, so we're adding the new roof for the addition, right? So why aren't we looking at? That's the good. Solar it's good. mechanical. That's what it's for all that. Okay, it's not the space that right. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 The, the car parts will be further apart the way, so we won't get. I think it'd be. Okay. Right. 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 okay. A lot of the issues is going to the attic. No, that was going to be on the roof. On roof, yes, roof shop. Yeah. Rooftop yeah. on the addition. Then there are cassettes within within the space. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there any other uh, general business? Anything you guys want to talk about? Okay, on the rooftops, as long as we're talking about stuff, are we going to need one of those uh, screenings for noise abatement that we had staff that ended up being? I think the screen was really for screening, visual screening. Visual screen. Ended up being for noise. It, it does no. keep it, yeah, but it, I, I think usually the, it's usually a kind of zoning issue more than anything else for, for visual. It's yeah. from, from the street side, but you know, we're, we're on the back side. Yeah. But, it, uh, but I, I mean, obviously, Brian is making sure that, that it's not, you know, going to sit outside the chief's window and he's going to be complaining about it all day. I mean, that's, I assume that's all we have thought. The people in the building are going to be the most affected. So if it needs to be a screen for noise, it's going to be the building people in the building. And so uh, let's just ver verify that the HVAC does not require additional screening. Yeah. I the uh, oh, it's not a screen I've ever done it through visual. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, we actually had the sound yeah. test and walk and walk around 6 a.m. sound tests. <laughs> they needed it to noise be, but that's that. Okay. Yeah. But kids nowadays have a much shorter attention span, so they had to do a Do the windows even open? Do the windows even what, open? What piece of equipment did you have at Saks? If you don't mind me asking that you, you had to screen like that. Sorry, I didn't hear that. 
there were there were two rooftop units. If you look at the addition, which okay. is near the corner of the farm road and South Avenue, there's a screen around it, mm -hmm. and that was we so, tried to lower the screen and remove it, but there's too much noise in the neighborhood. So, so those were roof rooftop units with chillers built into them. So those are the I mean those are much louder than anything that we'll have on this roof. But we'll we'll double check that. Okay. I mean the current roof has all the units that are right next to open windows. We can help them with I believe we would have been yeah, yeah, yeah. the bar yeah. 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 Um, and these are going to be custom windows based on uh, uh you know Brian's feel of what will be appropriate for that agent. The, the, the general plan was to make them look a little bit more like the original ones. Yes. The, the fifth style of the building. The ones were put in in the 1980s, which uh, an abomination. Yes. Yeah. Are, are they hurricane windows? Uh, I don't know the answer. There's certainly a building normal. There's, we were told that they, you know, that the building has to be hard to the hurricane windows because they have to they do have a um, a Lexan sheet in them. Um, I'm not sure whether they're I 90 or they're just more for security, but they probably function in the same manner. We can check with Brian on that. Yeah, we'll check with Brian, but I mean, let's face it, that's why you hire an architect that does nothing but police yeah. buildings. Yeah. I assume he uh, is well aware of the type of window we need. Well, Brian's project up in uh, what's the town outside of Danbury, they, they took them out with a value engineer because. Yeah, they're supposed to be required, but then if you take them out like they weren't before, yeah, yeah, yeah well, we will come. I, I think one of the things we're not going to have by value engineer out of the witness because when you, when you, if you poll 100 people walking by that building every day, what's the one thing you really care about? Making sure the windows match the, the beautiful brick. So, it's like so it's like they, it's they, like it's your set plus the fact that you have to hardened the requirements of a central building, exactly. They, they, they were hardened, they, they thought, I believe yeah. yeah. that they were, there was some type of a uh, Lexan, which is a ballistic kind of shielding. I just don't know what level was there. The school would have had, you know, I would have been sure. We could ask Brian that. We should, though. We should have that, you know. For the, for the uh, cocktail party discussion, we could know what kind of windows exactly are doing. Are any of them, do we know if any of them open or don't open? I think they're all off. They're open. Barbara and Windows are different. Yeah. Okay. They, I, I remember they were, they were quite expensive. So I guess it's paper kind of go the whole deal by window. Well, they're going to be much more energy efficient, right? But I would also that they're energy efficient in their in their window, you know. Right. It's so, but, but yeah, they need the whatever they kind of. So, um, just this is skipping a bit, but what happened with the uh, windows looking on the very first floor, looking into the exercise area? In the latest design, how many? I know that there were some structural issues that we had to solve. What did we end up with? The last that uh, I heard was they will be there. The, the, we have to add a door to say the, the, and it will be glass. So we need two glass doors and one or two other glass panels. It will be vertical, instead of horizontal, it will be vertical panels and light doorways with glass, and it, uh, which is not a structural problem. Okay. If you wanted to make it long horizontal, no, no, no. yeah. But the idea is to have some visibility and some light on the hallway to make that yes. Last break, that was perfect. Two doors and uh, one, two, three, thirty one panels. Okay. For next steps, uh, we have a PNC meeting on the 25th. Uh, right, Joe? And uh, we, uh, you know, Amy would like to get an update at the Board of Finance, either May or June, and we'll decide that based on uh, the quality of the information we have at, you know, at those times. Um, and as far as... Uh, we should go to town council. Oh, yeah. I, yes, when I say Board of Finance, I'm talking, my definition is going to town council as well, and the selectmen. Um, and uh, as far as... The, the reconciliation of the numbers, we're feeling like we're 85% there, just to throw out a... Oh, yeah, I, I would say, yeah, we're probably more. But I, I think, um, we, we have just one more item to go through, and then Joe and I need to reconcile the soft costs, so... Yeah. And the numbers, just to be clear, the numbers aren't the numbers until A, we have building, I mean, you know, we don't have all the building drawings, A, and B, we don't have a start date that's in stone until we uh, to, to put stuff out to 
that, that out that? there. But you're you're making assumptions based on most likely dates and your experience in, in current projects of what these numbers are likely to be. Is that fair? Yeah, uh, and I think we were uh, said we really need to solidify the move to the three nine locus so mm -hmm. that uh, um, we never right. went. We can't. Spread. Right. You can tell the still guy we want to showing up here September eighth, or you know whatever it is. Yeah, and there is um, we we have a about a four percent escalation factor in the numbers as well, so that's going to account for the any changes in the, change in the market between now and when we actually start purchasing. So, and, and that's pretty good number right now, I mean, the best we can guess mm -hmm. um, based yeah. on the current trend of it going down. Um, that that's a that's a fairly reasonable number. Right. We're competing against a lot of other public works buildings, right? I mean, commercial is is dead in the door now, I presume. Well, well yeah, the, the market is very active. Yeah, yeah. It's not only yeah. it's it's you know hospital care. Yeah, uh, there's that. Hospital, uh, yes, hospitals and different buildings. Everything. Schools. I work in schools. It's so busy. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. And so the interest yeah. rates haven't really cooled well, well, down yet. And I guess I've had such pent up demand on the medical side for about two years and everything shut down. We're, yeah, we have we have so much medical work, it's we can't even keep up with it. So, the reason is can you go over a rough uh, schedule? Like, what are you all looking at so now after uh, getting digging into this a bit? We have another estimate check um, mid May, right? I think it's what Brian said. Uh, we want to push that up to again early May, early May so that we can we, we want to have the numbers before we finish the drawing. So otherwise it's gonna overlap with going out to bid and that it's it's right. So that so that's just a, another market check to make sure we're on track. I think that's the money, that's the number we want to really go to the town council with to say, you know, get the final approval, I think. Um what we're trying to do is avoid having the GMP become the final decision point, but uh, you know that's our job to kind of manage that cost. Is so that fine working on construction drawing? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, the the plan is still to um, go out the bid on some of the early packages in May. Um, we're looking at doing the final um, bidding sometime in. Um, Probably around the end of June, um, which would be the the award of all the uh, the bidding of all the work that we haven't early purchased for a, an estimated construction date of November 30th. If there's there's a chance, like a pretty pretty good chance, if, depending on the approval process, that we could start construction earlier, maybe a month earlier. But again, it's all yeah. contingent on yeah the board yeah. to move into before that yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, I mean, you understand the building committee's concern, here, right? I mean, it's coming out of our budget, but yet, and we decided not to be involved per se to let the you know let, let the guys do it. On the other hand, uh, you know, when you start talking about the motherload budget being affected because you you know there's a start dates now we you know it gets it just gets our attention appropriately, and uh, we just want to make sure we're doing everything possible to uh, to help. And not be a hindrance. What is what can the date start to be you are you open to again to be the basically December for December first start the charge and that's really driven by the DLE's move and, and the real so that would give them uh, uh, September, October, November, give 90 days to get it done. They're moving, uh, they're moving. We have them. BOE moves out. Uh, we said August twenty fourth. I know, but the, the, the well, start of construction December first. There's a ninety day window there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but I thought Joe didn't the budget call for one hundred and twenty days with the. I saw something that said the what? police uh, renovations got to be one hundred twenty days. So uh, go, twelve. No, twelve weeks. So we yeah, have to stick to twelve weeks, and then I'm trying to yeah. include that. So 12 weeks of, or less ought to be our target. Yeah. The police renovation and move. And 12, 12 weeks. 12 weeks. Okay. Right. Yeah, so it's important you know, that that goes out the bid in August. Um, and that. Oh, no, no. no. Uh, Jen. Jen. That's going to be It's going to be a DOE. And that's going to be the renovation work's going to go out the bid soon so they can start. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Right. And if the board had moved out a little earlier, <laughs> get those, I don't think that's quite right. No, get it. Right. 
Yeah, but the critical path is the, the relocation. That's that's driving the, the, the late start on the construction side. So any improvement there is kind of dramatic improvement on the start date. But who's our who's our liaison over to the to the Board of Ed uh, construction and and their project? Is it point story there? Who's so I, I confirmed that the August 24th date with him last week. So he was just worried. He was a little worried about um, the um, furniture that was just released, whether they'll make sure they'll have the furniture in time. But besides that, he's he seemed fairly confident in the August 24th date. But if you hear anything different from the Board of Education side, let just please please you know keep me in the loop and I'll keep you in the loop if I hear any changes from Bill. Any other new business? All right. to no, no, hold it, hold it, hold it. I've got old business. What are, where are we on the training center? I've heard no discussion on that for months. Where are we on this? That was supposed to be part of the deal, as I understood it. I got, I know nothing. I know. So, Nobody knows so, anything. Now, we, we, we received the report from the civil engineer um, that the soil just last week that the, the soil um, can, the, we have good soil there. So basically the uh, septic right. system and the um, stormwater mitigation system can work over in that location. He's doing a final um, orientation of the building on that particular lot. And, uh, and then at that point, um, Kevin can, can go to the, uh, to the, to work on the deed restrictions. Joe, what, what are you talking about? Excuse me? I had heard two sites, what lot, what are you, what, what are you focusing on now? Where? I'm sorry, you're, you're, you're breaking up. Where is the building going to be located? Is the, the current study, site being studied? Well, there's two sites being studied. I'll, I'll gladly talk to you about it off, offline. I think it's important that um, Kevin has the conversations with the deed uh, before it becomes a public item. No, that's fair. Thank you. I just want to make sure we're still progressing and I just hadn't heard anything. I get a little nervous when Paul is told that there's good soil over there because it's going to tell us garden every more but they got the top soil to save itself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I appreciate it, Joe. Thank you. All right. And Bill. Sure. All right. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, guys. Thank, thanks, guys. Bye. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.